Good morning. Welcome to part two of our annual capstone presentation. Welcome students, welcome parents, welcome family and friends. Um, we're all in for a treat today. Uh, yesterday's presentation, for any indication, these capstone presentations, uh, I think, are probably some of the best ever. Now, yesterday, I spoke to you all a little bit about Ben Franklin. It's his birthday, and our namesake, the namesake of our school, and the inspiration for much of our mission. Uh, and, I, and I told you how, how, what a nice coincidence I thought it was that we were having the first day of capstone presentations on his birthday. Because um, capstone really is the, the epitome, the best example of everything that we strive to, to instill in our students at this school. And when you take all four pillars of our mission, and you think about if a student is able to, to learn from those and execute those four pillars, what kinds of things would they produce? And that is exactly the things that you've produced with your capstone projects. Today, we're, we're, we're up for four groups to present, four different advising groups. Now, that's a lot of presentation, that's a lot of advising groups. So after the second advising group today, I'm gonna to come back up on stage, and I'm gonna give everybody just a minute or two to do a stretch break, so that we can make sure that the last two advising groups have just as much of our attention as the first two, okay? So sit tight and look for me to, to, to come back up and announce when that will be. Before I introduce our first presenters today, I'd like everybody to take a moment to take a look at their program if you have one. On the front of the program, there's a motto. And that motto is not for self, but for others. And as you hear these capstone presentations today, you hear about the good work that has been done and the things that these eighth grade students have learned. I ask you to think about that motto. Because if you are truly successful in your capstone project, that motto is something you've come to understand and has become part of you. And when, as you move forward from eighth grade to ninth grade, and from ninth grade in high school to college, and from college to adulthood, it's that motto that you've learned here at BFCCPS, doing things not for yourself but for the benefit of others. Doing a capstone project, not for yourself, but for an impact that you can have as an eighth grade student on your, on your community. That it, it's that motto that we hope you take with you. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce our first advisor so she can introduce her first presenter. Let's give a big round of applause for Ms. Burke. Good morning. Uh, welcome again to the second day of the Capstone program. Um, congratulations to everyone that presented yesterday. You guys did a wonderful job. I'm sure we're in for some more wonderful presentations today. Um, our group, my group, has been working really hard and very enthusiastically throughout this entire process. And I hope you enjoy what they have to say. Mackenzie Allen, you're up first. Good morning, students and faculty at BSCCPS. As you know, my name is Mackenzie Allen. When thinking about my capstone project last year, I went through several different ideas for, before deciding to work with the HEART Project. The HEART Project is a round-the-world service project that sews homemade, homemade heart-shaped pillows for breast cancer and heart surgery patients. The pillows help the patients rest comfortably by resting under their armpits so that their stitches don't break. I decided that I would make these pillows for a few reasons. The first was that I saw older girls making them when I was younger, and I really wanted to do them. And the second was that I've had several family friends who have gone through the breast cancer process, and I knew that this would be very helpful to them. For my project, I held a pillow party. The pillow party was a party I held at the end of last year and invited all of the eighth grade girls. We made the heart pillows. We also glued cards because one of my friends said that one of the things they needed most was thank you cards for all of the, fam all the family, friends, and doctors and nurses who supported them. One of the requirements for the capstone process was that you educate others on your project. I did this by first putting information on the invitation to the party, second explaining what my project was to family and friends, and finally when we went to get supplies, we told the store owners what we were doing. Before the girls came, I cut and sewed the pillows almost all the way around, leaving a gap so that the girls could stuff the pillows. I took everything the girls would need and put them in a plastic bag. This included a pillow, stuffing, needle, and thread. I taught the girls how to stuff and sew up the, the pillow. The finished, bag, the finished bags were sent 
finished bag for sent to the John Hopkins Medical Center in Washington, D.C. In total, we made over 35 pillows and 100 cards. This total reached my goals and more. For my goals, I wanted all of the eighth grade girls to come and make one pillow and five cards, and of course, to have fun. Even though not all the girls could come, we made more pillows and cards than originally planned. While completing this project, I had challenges. The first was, of which was that I broke my toe the day before the party. But this caused a lot of confusion on whether the party was still going to happen or not. I tried to tell everyone that we were still going to have it and to come to my house that night. But not everyone heard. Another problem was that it was a busy time of year and people had parties and were getting ready to go on vacation. So that didn't allow other people to come as well. There wasn't anything I could do to change this because my fam this was a good time for my family, and but most everybody made it. Another problem was that we couldn't find a hospital that would take the pillows nearby until we found John Hopkins on the internet. During the time it took to complete my project, I also learned many things. The first of which is that your capstone doesn't have to be boring, it can be fun. The other is that starting out early on in the game makes everything so much easier. You don't have to feel rushed or stressed when you come back to school because your capstone is all done. And finally, I learned that though this project took a lot of work and effort, it helped many people, and that's what's important. I couldn't have done this project without help from many, many people. The first and most important is my family. My mom and dad for always being there to help and making sure I did what I needed to correctly. My sister Megan for helping and taking pictures. My brother for helping me when I needed it. My advisors, Coach Burke and Coach Simpson, for helping me complete the steps I needed to. Mr. Prona and Ms. Lonowski for making sure I was on the right track. The girls in my grade for helping finish the, the pillows. The Franklin Mount Batter store for donating the bags that the pillows were sent to in. John Hopkins Medical Center Medical Center in Washington, D.C. for accepting the pillows, and thank you for listening. And next up will be Samantha Hansen. Good morning, students, faculty, and parents of BFCCPS. My name is Samantha Hansen, and for my eighth grade capstone project, I chose to start the PCO Student Helper Legacy Project. The PCO, or Parent Community Organization, is a group of parents who volunteer their time and energy to bring our school community together to benefit us and the countless local projects and organizations. They help out with fundraising and bring to us some of our amazing assemblies. I started my capstone by approving my choice with Mrs. Schwab, who countlessly helped me throughout my project. I was introduced to the PCO at the last meeting of the 2011-2000 school year. I met the old and new PCO over the summer. <coughs> I met the old and new PCO, and over the summer, I stayed in contact with my PCO liaison, Ms. Sue Ann Bell, the PCO vice president. She went over my jobs and answered any questions that I had. My first event as the PCO student helper was the family picnic that was held at the common before school started. Many people showed up and two of the flyers that I was asked to create were handed out. One was for the ice cream social and one was a save the date handout. The ice cream social was a huge success with both the amount of volunteering and donations and the numerous students who took time out of their Friday evening to spend time with community. With help from my friends and my sister, we handed out free raffle tickets and welcomed people as they walked to fifth and sixth grade recess fields. Overall, I helped by making flyers, announcing upcoming events, and volunteering at three of them. I also attended two general PCO meetings with the parents and one meeting with Mrs. Onowski and Ms. Frankina, the 2012-2013 PCO president. My most recent work was getting flyers approved and hung up around school making an announcement at the 7th and 8th grade lunch, and filling out information about the ice skating night at the Franklin Rink onto the white fold-up board that sits outside in the courtyard. To, communi to communicate to my community about the PCO actions and events, I used the school intercom and the time at the end of the 7th and 8th grade lunch period to really get the students aware about the upcoming events. Also, I used the pink sheet several times as a way to allow the parents to be aware of what was to be coming in the near future. Some obstacles I faced were miscommunication on my part and procrastination. 
I faced miscommunication because I would sometimes read emails from the PCO wrong or miss a step, and this would affect my hard work negatively. My next obstacle, procrastination, has led me to almost missing some of my deadlines. I overcame these obstacles by asking questions and learning to get tasks done as soon as asked. Some positive results have been that I have grown in my confidence in public speaking skills and I have learned to become more independent. I was even able to put an idea of mine into motion with the PCO suggestion box. I hope that this tool will continue to be used and that it will become a successful source of communication for the future PCO groups. I would like to thank my mom for constantly keeping on me for doing my work, Coach Burke and Coach Simpson for guiding me through the steps, the PCO for allowing me to start this legacy project, my advising group for their endless support, Mrs. Schwab for making sure that I never gave up on any of my tasks and making great suggestions. I would also like to thank my friends Alora, Caroline, Sarah, and my sister Rachel for participating in many events and helping out. And I would also like to thank the community for their support and participation in helping the PCO. I wish the best of luck to the seventh grade, and even though you've heard it before, don't procrastinate, and your capstone will be successful. Thank you. Nevin Justice. Respected faculty, parents, and friends, I'm Nim Justice, and for my capstone, I decided I wanted to do something to help soldiers. After searching for some organizations that I could help, I finally chose two organizations. Buddy Bowl, which is, a, which is what Sam Krakowski did last year, and a million things. Buddy Bowl is a nonprofit charity that hosts a flag football tournament annually in several towns in the U.S., for example, Mills in Massachusetts and San Diego in California. The Buddy Bowl was founded in 1977 in San Diego, California, as a fun way to re annually reunite friends with a common interest in playing football. In 1999, the Buddy Bowl's focus was changed from a simple reunion of friends to that of raising money for a worthy cause. The Buddy Bowl is unique because it's the only annual event in the U.S. that raises money for military and law enforcement personnel and their families through a community-based flag football tournament includes both physically challenged and able-bodied participants. Today the, today, the Buddy Bowl is played across the nation to support injured military, first responders, and their families. I chose to help this organization for two reasons. The first reason is I love playing football, and this organization raises money through annual flag football tournament. The second reason was I wanted to help soldiers in some way for my capstone, so it was a perfect match of football and soldiers together for my capstone. To help Buddy Bowl, I raised money, formed a team, and helped with the organization. I went to their meetings during the summer to help plan the event. I also raised, some, raised money by selling snacks at soccer games at Daisy Community Field on Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. for about five weeks. I participated in the 36th Buddy Bowl flag football tournament on Saturday, November 17th at the Clyde Brown School in Mills, Massachusetts. Me, my brother, Nero, my friends Alex Mondo and Zach Mondo were on the BSCCPS team. The tournament was from 8.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. There were three games for each team, then a game for the first and second place team. Sadly, our team lost every game, but we had fun with it all the time. For the second part of my capstone, I decided to help out with a mailing thing. A mailing thing is a year-round campaign to show our appreciation for U.S. military men and women, past and present for their sacrifices, dedication, and service to our country through letters, emails, cards, and our prayers. It helps soldiers by giving them happiness and a feeling of knowing that people care about them. I picked it since it was going to be a small and easy side project to go with Buddy Bowl. Some of my friends from my church, my family, and me made some cards this time, and I'm planning on helping someone in the near future. <coughs> Obviously, I had some obstacles in my capstone process. One was the teams I was working on didn't happen as expected, Many of my friends at our school were busy on the day of Buddy Bowl, many taking high school placement tests or HSPTs on the same day, so they couldn't join. And the team I was planning on making for my neighborhood didn't work out either, since many of the people that said they would join found out that they're, they're busy on the day of Buddy Bowl because of Thanksgiving, 
which is a few days ahead of the tournament day, and many are traveling. Also, I tried to put out the Buddy Bowl fly on the website of the Franklin Department of Recreation. Unfortunately, I did not receive a response. Another obstacle was my procrastination. During the summer, when I was free from the hassle of homework and projects, I could easily work on my capstone. Instead, I only worked on it a few times, most of which was when my parents reminded me. Despite of these obstacles, it was a challenging, fun, and an experience about justice, temperance, prudence, and fortitude. Before I conclude, I'd like to thank many people, but to name a few, Chip Fagan for helping me with Buddy Bowl, Coach Burke and Coach Simpson for helping me complete Capstone, my parents for everything they did to support and help me during this process, my sister Nikita for helping me sell snacks at Daisy Community Field, my friends Alex Mondo, Zach Mondo, and my brother Nero for joining the BFCCPS Buddy Bowl team. And last but not least, I thank all my teachers and my friends who supported and encouraged me on this project. And good luck to all the seventh graders on their cast line. Thank you. Next, we have Rishi Ketri. students and faculty of BFCGPS. My name is Rishi Ketri, and for my capstone project, I joined the fight against illiteracy. The definition of illiteracy is the inability to read or write. I chose the topic I worked with because of the surprising results that I found after I did some research. I discovered that illiteracy is a very big problem in countries that have a high poverty rate. It also poses a problem to countries that are fully developed, like the US. Children whose parents live in poverty usually also go into poverty and become illiterate. I believe all people should have a right to learn to read and write despite how much money they have. Sometimes we take education and schooling for granted and constantly complain about it. There are people all over the world who covet any form of education where they would be able to learn to read or write. <clears throat> I did illiteracy for my capstone project because I believe that it is unjust and unfair that people who cannot afford an education cannot receive one. I raised awareness for illiteracy in a few different ways. I put a note in the pink sheet that told readers about my cause. I also offered my community a chance to join my efforts in lowering illiteracy rates. I started a book drive in the school. The books were sent to a different school that was in need of them. After letting my school community know, I thought bigger. I set up a stand in the neighborhood where I live, and anyone who stopped by was informed about illiteracy and its harmful effects. I also sold small goodies that people could buy. Half of the money would go to an organization that I worked with named UNICEF. This organization works globally to decrease illiteracy rates. The other half of the money I raised went to a school in India that needed some money to buy learning technologies for their students. For my capstone, I also volunteered at the Franklin Public Library. I volunteered there about once a week for most of July and the whole month of August. I met with some visitors there and told them about my cause. Most were very interested and surprised at how much illiteracy adversely affects us globally. Fortunately for me, I only encountered a few obstacles when implementing my capstone project. Probably the biggest roadblock I faced that took away time to work on capstone was the summer geometry class that my fellow classmates and I participated in. This class was on all weekdays during the summer break. This conflicted with how much time I could volunteer at the library and also with how much fundraising and raising awareness I could do. In my eyes, there were many positive results that came out of my capstone project. It was an eye-opening experience for me personally. I learned so much about the effect of illiteracy in children and how this adversely impacted their later adult life. A positive result for my community is that because of my capstone, they're better informed. Hopefully, my community will spread the word and hopefully someday, illiteracy will be recognized for the terrible thing that it really is. I learned a lot during the course of my capstone project. I learned not to, not to procrastinate doing my work. If an opportunity presents itself to get some work done, I should take it. I learned that when setting a long-term goal like I did with my capstone, I should work on it with any free time I have. I put off working on my capstone a lot during the summer, thinking that when school started, I'd be able to work on it. This was a big mistake on my part because when school started, I was bogged down with homework and projects and had almost no time for capstone. I struggled, but finally made the time during the academic year to finish my capstone. 
Lastly, I learned just how important the ability to read and write is. People can have big dreams or aspirations, but they will not come true if the person's illiterate. Illiteracy is a big problem for our entire population. Nearly every single country in the world has illiterate people. If more awareness is raised about this, our world would flourish beyond belief. If we eliminate illiteracy in children, they will grow up to be successful adults who work to make our world a better place to live in. I have a small tip for seventh graders just starting the capstone experience, which is don't procrastinate. The entire project seems overwhelming at first, but if you work hard now, you'll be grateful you did. It's a big project and a big responsibility, and if you pr procrastinate, it only dampens the whole experience. But trust me, in the end, it's worth it to see how you've benefited the community and the people around you. I'd like to thank a few people who helped me along my capstone journey. First, I'd like to thank my advisors, Coach Simpson and Coach Burke. Both helped me along the way, giving me ideas for fundraising and also helping with any problems I face. I'd also like to thank my fellow advisees for supporting me with my capstone project. Also, my parents for spending time with me on my capstone and driving me where I needed to go. Lastly, I'd like to thank Ms. Odie, the library director, for letting me volunteer there. I appreciate your attention. I hope you enjoyed the rest of the presentation. Thank you. Anna McDonald's up next. Good morning, DSCCPS, and welcome to the parents and guests gathered here today. As you heard, my name is Anna McDonald, and for my project, I created the DSCCPS official school video. Capstone is a special project that one starts in January during their seventh grade year and finishes one year later. It prepares students for large projects that they might encounter during high school, and it lets students do some community service. My project was not like others. It was different because I did not focus on helping a worldwide cause or fixing a local issue, but instead, I decided to do a little something for our school community. I was given the idea from teachers and students who thought we could use a video for introducing people to and promoting our school. I decided to look into it more. I went through step one, brainstorming other projects I could take on, but as I was narrowing it down to what would be my special project, I always came back to this. I was excited. As I started to plan it out, I knew I would make a nice outline to show me how to put this video together piece by piece. I went to the wonderful dfccps.org and noticed my work was basically laid out in front of me. Each tab on our school website gave me a main sketch of what the film would talk about. Character, student life, curriculum, and classical education. As I started to sketch a final outline, I knew I would need narrators, photos, and videos to create this, working alone. I could get photos and video from the website, and I also could take them myself. I could choose volunteer eighth graders to be narrators. After all, we do know a lot about our school. I have three major goals. I decided to have the film done by February because I should be able to gather up photos and videos from school events through January, and to have 50 photos and videos and students included in the video because it can't just be a boring video that just shows words the whole time. And I also wanted it to be five to 15 minutes long because it shouldn't be too long or too short. I did not want the video to be like a regular TV commercial, mainly attracting people to the school, but I wanted it to feature what Charter has to offer to the community and to the students. I educated others about my capstone project by going to different classrooms and telling them about my project. I told my fellow students that I was making a movie to show our school is best. Then I asked them to be in multiple parts of the film by filming teachers teaching them and kids doing their everyday activities. I filmed kids or gardeners taking a picture test, fourth graders participating in class, and so much more. I went to many occasions last year, like the ice cream social and people's capstone events, to get even more footage. Of course, like everyone else, I faced many obstacles during this experience. I originally wanted to premiere the film to the school, but because of the bad habit of procrastination, I did not set up a date and time for reviewing. Also, I think I should have planned ahead more, because it's hard to produce and edit a 15-minute film. Because of this, I had help from my peers editing it and filming it to make it easier for me. I learned many, many things as well. As I face these challenges, I learned life lessons that will guide me through other projects and exciting new experiences. I learned technical things like how to resize certain images that were too small and how to get extra footage from just one video. I learned big life lessons like even though you have so many things going on in life, you can always find time to work on what's important. Also, I learned to just take things step by step and don't rush through things because that will make everything work. I have some advice for the 7th graders seated here today just starting the 
Even if you're working on this project alone, remember that everyone in your grade is going through the same thing. Don't hesitate to support your peers' projects and lend them a hand. Don't be afraid to ask for help, and don't forget to take, to take your time and not rush through things. The video still needs a little tweaking, but overall I've met my goals. I'm glad to have made a video so that new families and outside communities will have a wonderful idea of the true VFCPS. I'd like to say thank you to my advisor, Coach Burke, and also to Coach Simpson for guiding me through the process. Thank you for, to everyone who participated in narrating, editing, and filming the video, especially Grace Bremer. And thank you to my parents for helping me with my speech and video, also for driving me to events. Thank you to the parents and guests for gathering here today, and good luck to all the students and advisors who will soon come across Cap. Jessica Sims. Good morning, students, parents, and faculty of BFCCPS. My name is Jessica Sims, and for my capstone project, I made and gave police blankets to the patients of the Hatfield Children's Hospital. When I was younger, my parents taught me to be grateful for what we have because there are kids just like me who weren't as fortunate. Once caption started and we began brainstorming ideas, I reflected back to what I learned just years ago. I wanted to somehow impact kids who couldn't do all the same things you and I do. Just the little things like going to school or going on vacation with your family. We kids at hospitals don't have that opportunity because they are sick in bed. When I started coming up with ideas to actually accomplish my caption project, I faced some obstacles. My first idea was to help a children's hospital. I was going to help the Boston Children's Hospital because on their website they had little projects that would raise money for them. One of them was to have a yard sale. So I'd like to have a yard sale at our school, but you had to have a permit to do so, and that cost a lot of money. After that, I had to brainstorm yet again. Once I began to think, I remember that during some of my free time, I made fleece blankets for family members, and they liked them a lot. I contacted a family friend who was very good at making these blankets, and she, and she said she could help. Not only did she help me cut the blankets and teach me how to cut them, she gave me a contact information to the Haskell Children's Hospital. Instead of making the blankets for patients at Boston Children's Hospital, we made it for the Haskell Children's Hospital patients because it was more convenient because they had, I had contact information already at hand. Once I came up with this idea, I emailed my advisors, Coach Burke and Coach Simpson, also Mrs. Lonowski, to see if my new idea was okay. All of them replied that my new idea was fine and then I started working on it. My first step was to call the person my family friend gave me, explain to the lady what caption was and what I like to do. She said that the blanket idea was great, but I had to wash all the blankets and put them in Ziploc bags because there couldn't be any germs on them if they're going to the patients. The next thing I did was go to Joanne Fabrics to get all the material. My mom and I used many coupons and got everything we needed. A couple weeks later, my mom's friend came and taught us how to cut the fabric to be able to tie them. She helped us with half of the blankets and we did the rest ourselves. Once we cut all the blankets, I realized that I couldn't make 30 blankets myself. It would take a long time, and I couldn't get them to the hospital by the time I needed to. So I invited some friends to help me. I made an e-bite and explained some stuff about the hospital and why I wanted to do this project. I then made an example blanket, and then most of the people I invited came. We made all the blankets in an hour, and we got some free time. After the party, I had to wash the blankets, but then my next obstacle came. Both my brother and mother caught a cold. I didn't want to get the I didn't want to wash the blankets when some people are sick in the house. I was trying to avoid delivering when a bunch of people were delivering toys and books for the holidays, but it turned out I had to. I washed them with some help from my mother a week later, but some of the blankets unraveled in the wash so I had to retie them, but then I got them finished. The Friday before Christmas vacation started, I went to, the, to deliver the blankets. My family and I carried five bags of little bags of blankets in them. The best thing I heard during this experience was when Mary and the lady I have contacted told me that the kids at the hospital would be so excited to see these types of blankets. You see these blankets because they love the, these types. I was very happy to hear that. Some things I learned through this project was that you have to pick a topic you are interested in. I was very motivated to work on this project because I wanted to help kids, just like the kids at the hospital, be happy. If you pick a topic you're not that interested in, most likely procrastinate or just not get the project done to the best of your ability. I also learned that giving is better than receiving. Yes, I do get excited to get presents during the holiday season, but when I heard that these kids, these kids just love these type of blankets, I felt very good. During this experience, I had a lot of help. The person who helped me a lot was my mother. She took me to Joanne's, she baked when my friends came over, and she helped cut a few blankets and wash them. 
Most of she was there the entire time, clearly. My father also helped a lot, too. He drove everyone to the hospital and also he supported me. I also want to thank Lowell's Holmes, the family friend. She gave me the contact information to Marion, and she also helped cut and teach us how to cut the blankets. I want to thank Marion for letting me get this project done and being there to pick up the phone almost every single time I called. I also want to thank my advisors, Coach Burke and Coach Sinton, for guiding me throughout the way and supporting me. Lastly, I want to thank everyone who came to help me tie the blankets, because I wouldn't have gotten, gotten them all tied and to complete my project. Thank you all for listening, and have a great rest of your day. Good morning, students and faculty, and welcome parents to BSECPS. My name is Nathan Tracy, and I'm in Coach Burks and Coach Simpson's advisor group. At the beginning of my capstone experience, I had many project ideas, but I decided to work with the Providence for All and McDonald House. The Providence for All and McDonald House, or the house for short, is a home for families with hospitalized children. When I was born 14 years ago, my parents stayed at the house because I was eight weeks premature. This organization has had a big impact on my family, so I wanted to give back to it. After getting the approval to start my project, I went on the house's website to see what I could do. From there, I contacted the volunteer coordinator, Ms. George. She told me about the upcoming 5K walk, which raised funds for the house. I had to get sponsors for the walk, so I contacted some family members. With late notice about the event, I received about $130 in total. I had a great time particip participating in the walk, I reached my goal by walking the 5K. Next, I contacted Ms. Anderson. And after emailing her a few times, I contacted Ms. Chikalski. She gave me some ideas on what I could do. I decided to cook two meals at the house, so she helped me schedule two dates so I could, walk, so I could reach my goal of 10 hours of community service. For the first meal, my dad and I decided to cook meatloaf, mashed potatoes, and a mixed vegetable dish. We stopped for ingredient, ingredients and drove to the house. The house can accommodate up to 18 families, so we need to cook a lot of food. My dad and I started to make the meatloaf, and then when they were ready to be cooked, we put them in the ovens. Next, we made cookies and a special homemade sauce. We even peeled 10 pounds of potatoes. The next, second time we went, it went smoother because we knew where all the cooking utensils and supplies were. The house guests loved the food that we made, and I reached my goal of 10 hours of community service. The last part of my past on project was the wishes drive. The purpose of the wish list drive was to um, collect items for the house. My goal was to receive 20 items, and I exceeded this goal and got 32 items in total. The house staff was very grateful for the generous donations. In order to educate others about my classroom project, project I told my classmates about it and put a notice of fire in the pin sheet about the wish list drive. I faced only a few minor obstacles throughout my classroom project. I had trouble scheduling two dates to volunteer because of my own activities and available dates to volunteer on. Despite these two impediments, my casting had an overall positive result. I learned better time management skills and, I, and have helped others. I also learned I can do many things and never knew I could accomplish. In the future, I will continue my work with the Providence for All Madonnas. I would like, I would, my success cannot be possible without the help of the following people. I would like to acknowledge my parents, my advisors, Coach Burke and Coach Simpson, the house staff, and Mr. Brennan, and also anyone who donated items during the Worcester drive. In conclusion, I would like to say good luck to the upcoming eighth graders in your Castman project. It is no easy task, but with hard work and determination, you can complete a great project. Thank you. Congratulations, guys. Great job. Um, before I introduce the next advisor and group, I would like to acknowledge Anna Shaker. She's also uh, one of my advisees. She will be presenting later on in the program with a different group. And the next group up is Mrs. L. Excuse me for being a little tight. Um, <laughs> good morning, BFCC friends and family. Um, Capstone is a time for celebration, and it is the culmination of more than a year's work by all our students. So I am as happy as a lark, as happy as a pig in slop, as happy as the day is long, as happy as can be. 
I'm as happy as a clam. I am a happy camper. I am absolutely giddy. And I am pleased as punch. And I couldn't be happier to present my advising group to you for this morning's presentation. And first up is Caroline Landry. Greetings students, faculty, and parents. My name is Caroline Landry, and I am in Mrs. Laura Vieira's advising group. For my capstone, I have focused on educating the students on ending bullying in our school. How I aimed to help the school was by starting an anti-bullying club. I held my club on Fridays during lunch during the month of October. Each week, we talked about a different aspect of bullying and then discussed it by using scenarios and discussing each aspect carefully. At the end of the month, I gave each person that attended a bracelet that read, I am somebody. Those words might not seem much, but they mean a lot to people who are bullied by others who say they are unpopular and are treated like they don't exist. That can make that person yell at themselves and hurt themselves in a way that is extremely unhealthy and they, that person would have to, put, have to be put in special care to fix the problem. To that person, those three words mean everything in the world. <coughs> Bullying is an issue that we deal with every day, no matter what, and there is usually nothing we can do about it but complain. So by focusing on bullying as my capstone, I was able to work with a group of girls in the club and make a small difference in their day-to-day -day lives. The club was a success because I met my goal of having 10 people come and participate in the club. I was very successful, so much that I was able to continue the club for the 7th and 8th grade students, but having the meetings less frequently. It has helped to have the support of Ms. Dobin, who has helped me run the club and give me the ideas on topics for the upcoming weeks. I, as well as many other people in this room, have dealt with bullying one time or another. At one point in my almost nine years of going to charter, I was bullied every day because of a characteristic that was unique. I had talked with my advising group and close friends, and they helped me through the problem by giving me encouragement and guidance. To help think of what to do, I found an organization to work with, Stand for the, Stand for the Silent. Stand for the Silent, or SFTS, is, is an organization that is run by Kirk and Laura Smalley. The Smalley's work with kids all over the U.S. to help end, end bullying in schools and communities. They started the organization after their 11-year-old son committed suicide because he was bullied in his school. They, gave, they give seminars and talk with kids about aspects of bullying and consequences that come with bullying. The way I found SFTS was that I wanted to get more inspiration for my project by looking online to see what other pro groups were doing. SFTS really caught my eye because of their website and their interesting backstory. One fact I'd learned was that since May 2010, the Smallies have visited over 100 schools and talked to well over 580,000 kids. I believe that they have made a huge impact on the world. To help fundraise SFTS, I held a raffle. My raffle was put together, but what was fun to put together, but it wasn't as successful as I had hoped because not many people bought raffle tickets. I ended up making $52.50 when my original goal was to make $100. I, I realized that I could have made more money if I had branched out to other grades and started the raffle earlier in the capstone process. I was glad about focusing on bully for, bullying for my capstone project because I was able to focus on something everybody can relate to. The only other obstacles I had were time management and organization. I had a hard time getting forms and assignments done because of other homework and busy schedules. The organizational problems were just getting all my materials get, together and organized as well as organizing the blue sheets. I would like to thank Mrs. Larivier and Ms. Sobin for giving me the support and guidance that I needed to complete my capstone project. I would li I'd like to thank my friends for participating in my club and for those who participated in the raffle. I would like to thank my parents for giving me the support and offering help when I needed it and putting up with me when I declined their offers to help. I would like to thank Ms. Mr. and Mrs. Smalley for working with me during the process and agreeing to give me the materials I needed. I also would like to thank Mr. Perna and Mrs. Zolanowski for approving my capstone and giving me this wonderful experience. I couldn't be more grateful for everyone who helped and supported me throughout the, the tough process we call capstone. I just want to finish off by saying good luck to the seventh grade and make sure to pick a topic that you would think you would find fun and that you think would be able to make a difference with. Also, don't worry about working with someone you wouldn't normally work with because even though I didn't work with a partner, it doesn't matter. I hope you all had... I hope you all have as much fun as I did with the project. Thank you. I'd like
like to welcome up Sarah Lepsevich as she hobbles up here. Good morning, BFCCPS faculty, students, and guests. My name is Sarah Lepswich, and my capstone focus on raising donations for the BPAP Humane Society of Washington. I knew my capstone would support the support. I knew my capstone would support the welfare of animals simply because my passion for animals is something innate to me. I recently found a questionnaire I completed in Mrs. Canning's kindergarten class, and the question was, "What do you want to be when you grow up?" I wrote a welfare. Whether it was begging my parents to take me to aquariums or zoos as a child, pet sitting for friends, or playing fetch with my own dog. Spending time observing animals and suffering has always brought joy and peace into my life. I chose the Bay Path Humane Society because of the amazing dedication this non-kill shelter has for abuse and abandoned animals. The mission of the shelter is to place animals in loving homes, promote the care of these animals, and educate the public about proper pet care, overpopulation, and the prevention of animal cruelty. Since opening their doors in 1977, they have placed more than 1,000 dogs and cats in new loving homes each year. My first experience with the shelter came in June of 2009. Our family had to put our dog down and I was devastated. My parents decided that we would not get another dog right away, but they did agree to volunteer at Bay with me. Beginning that summer, we walked and played with the dogs and cats, as well as assisted with laundry and cleaning. I got so attached to the animals, it was bittersweet when they were adopted because I was so happy for them, but it was still sad to say goodbye. BPAP has undergone many changes in the last three years, and I am proud that I have contributed to the improvement of the shelter. I decided on two activities that would raise awareness to the school and local community, which would provide assistance to the shelter. First, the 12th annual Bark in the Park held in June at Hopkinton State Park. This is a fun-filled day of family activities, training demonstrations, raffles, and a silent auction. Most importantly, all the proceeds raised directly benefit the animals at the shelter. To raise money for this event, I wrote, a, I wrote a letter and sent it to family and friends informing them of BayPath's mission and asked for sponsorship in the walkathon. My goal was to raise $400. However, thanks to the generous donations, I surpassed my goal and donated over $800 to BayPath. In doing this, I was acknowledged as one of the top fundraisers at the event. During the fall, I held a donation drive within the school community. BayPath posts a wish list on their website with the items currently required at the shelter. To complete this activity, I posted a write-up in the pink sheet to explain to the local community Bay Path's mission and listed items the shelter needed. Next, with the help of my advisory group, I created posters and displayed them throughout the school to bring awareness to students and faculty. It made me realize that our school community had a lot of animal lovers in it. Working on a year-long project certainly doesn't come without a few bumps in the road. I unfortunately was unable to volunteer any hours at the shelter. I, am, I unfortunately was, uh, they no longer allow children under the age of 18 to volunteer on site, even if supervised by an adult. Then my puppy got so excited at the Bark in the Park event that she couldn't complete the walk. <laughs> to overcome this, my dad and sister took Zoe back to rest while my mom and I completed the walk. Even though issues came up, I reminded myself the goal is to bring, to bring awareness to Bay Path and decide to focus on what I can accomplish. Now that I've completed my capstone, I can appreciate all the work that went into each step of the process. I learned that what seemed to be a daunting task in the beginning turned out to be such a great experience. I love spending time and raising awareness for Bay Path. I am proud that I raised over $800 and collected donations from the shelter. I was amazed by the outpouring of gratitude from the staff for my effort to support the wonderful work they do every day. And I, am and I am surprised at how this experience has impacted me. It taught me to work what you have passion for because then it just doesn't feel like work at all. I am confident that my support of animals will be something I continue to work on after I leave BFCCPS. There are many people who I'd like to recognize and thank for helping me through this process. First is my family, my father, mother, and sister Amanda who support me throughout the year. Next, Mr. Perna. Not only for proving my capstone project, but for the support he has shown me throughout my nine years here at the school. Also, the staff and volunteers at BayPAP for allowing me to work with them for my capstone project. Most importantly, my advisor, Mrs. L, and my advisor group for helping me brainstorm activities and for making posters to get the word out. And finally, to all the family, friends, and BFCCPS community 
for doing it and supporting my cast. So thank you all. Yes. My name is Matthew Mosing, and I've been at this wonderful school since kindergarten. One of the amazing parts of the school is Capstone. Ever since I saw the speeches and heard about these projects, I was devastated that I'd ever have to go through this process. <laughs> I have to be honest, I did not want to do community service, but when Capstone started in seventh grade, I realized it was something truly special. I learned that community service was such an amazing thing to do, the smile you see on someone's face after helping them or visiting or talking with them is just purely amazing. For my capstone, I went to Forest Hill Senior Living Community to visit the elderly. I chose this project because after my grandmother had a stroke, I realized she had changed. She became slightly negative about most things. This made me very sad. One day, when I went with my mother to pick up my brother Adam from Forest Hill where he was visiting the seniors, when I got there, I realized some of the seniors who were in a different lobby room looked sad while the seniors in the lobby being visited were very happy. I wanted to help the other seniors who were sad become happy like the ones being visited. I did a little research and found that seniors that aren't, that aren't visited get sad and lonely after being in one of these homes. So I called Ford Shill and asked them if I could visit. Since part of my project was to spread the word of me to visit the elderly, I asked if I could bring a volunteer every time. They said that I could be a volunteer and that the seniors enjoyed visitors but loved crafts. So I concluded that this was, I would not only visit the elderly with a friend, but I would bring a craft each time. For my first visit, I went with my friend Hayden. We brought a pen craft. This is exactly what it sounds like. You take a pen and an artificial flower, and using some green foil tape, you put them together into a nice pen that looks like a flower. I chose this because it was the summertime, and the seniors for the most part were stuck in their rooms. So I wanted them to have something that represented beauty in the outdoors. This visit went very well. About nine seniors attended. It was a great turnout than I expected. We all talked, did the craft, and had a great time. It all went away amazing, and it warmed my heart seeing the smiles on their faces. For my second visited, visit, I planned and prepared another craft. This craft was painting woodcraft. I brought an assortment of woodcrafts like flowers, birdhouses, and little baskets. This craft went even better than the first visit. We only had five people at this activity, though, but some of them were familiar faces. This is great, because the people must have enjoyed my first craft and wanted to come to my next visit. We all talked and painted and had a great time. These are just two of the five activities I did with the seniors. Every activity I did, I put time into effort thinking of. But why? Well, because of service, and you can't just throw random activities together at the last minute and prepare everyone to understand so because of this, I took my project very seriously. Even though my friends wanted to hang out on the days I did my visits, I turned them down. I couldn't just blow off the geezers as one of my friends. I, I couldn't because all the time and effort I put into everything, it just would have all gone to waste. The capstone always comes with obstacles. One of the obstacles I faced was keeping the crafts at a low price. I did not want to have to raise a lot of money, so I kept the crafts good but cheap. Another obstacle was the physical issue of some of the seniors. Some of the elders had poor vision, some had weak hands, and some had a hard time following simple instructions. I had to choose crafts that they would both like and would be able to do with little assistance. This capstone experience has taught me so much about virtue. For example, as I said earlier, I thought going through the capstone process was boring and miserable, and I would just hate it so much. But I learned that it's not always about you, it's always about other people. I learned that other people have it way worse than me, and I have to appreciate the small things, even basic things, like walking or writing. Some of these elders could barely even talk. Another lesson I learned was to be happy and positive. The elders were always so kind and positive, despite obvious physical problems they had. It helped me be more positive and have an appreciation for the simple stuff in life. I would like to thank my parents for being with me and helping me with my project in time and time. For my mom, her help with all the crafts, I'd like to thank my advisor, Mrs. L, for helping me with every step of my capstone process and making it so my capstone project was so successful. I would like to thank my advisees for being close friends 
and keeping me on the right track and reminding me of all the past MD reads. I would like to thank my volunteers for coming to my visit and sharing what you learned with your families. I would like to thank Fortune Senior Living Committee and the Activity Seniors, the Activity Seniors Director for being putting me into their busy schedule. Lastly, I'd like to thank all my friends for being very supportive of my capstone project. Thank you. Next, I'd like to introduce Alex Manjo. Did you know that it takes a million years for a plastic water bottle to decompose? Here's some interesting facts to make you think about the next time you almost put your water bottle in the trash. Americans use 2.5 million plastic bottles every hour. About 80% of what Americans throw away is recyclable. But the worst fact of all is when you throw out your water bottle and it gets taken to a landfill and also sits there for a million years. But there is still hope for the students at BFCCPS. For me, the students before me who took on the project of recycling, we've got the students to recycle their plastic bottles and containers. It has not been easy, but I'm glad to have completed this. We as students have created many things just by putting these plastic water bottles and generously donated big wide bags. On the bright side, by recycling the bottles, there are many benefits to recycling. When, when you recycle 28 water bottles, you can make one graduation gown. The bags that I use for collecting the water bottles are made out of water bottles themselves. Lastly, the number of hours that the energy is saved from recycling one plastic bottle uh, can save a 60 watt light bulb. There are many more reasons why we should recycle. I'm just scratching the surface, but if we can all just recycle one bottle, well then you just save yourself a trip to Home Depot to buy yourself a new light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> These are all important things that we need to consider when recycling. Hello, my name is Alex Mondro, and I've taken the challenge of this capstone project. For the past year, each student in the eighth grade was assigned a capstone project to help their community in some way. Uh, I have taken the time given for capstone to do recycling for the school. This, however, was not my original plan. What I originally wanted to do was to do composting and work with the garden. That is what I thought I was doing until the summer. My schedule did not fit the times that I had to go and work, so for most of the summer, I didn't do anything on my project. It was not until my first advising meeting where I learned my new project, recycling. This project to me sounded silly, because I never really thought of recycling or really cared, and I never recycled myself. In fact, uh, only now I understand the importance of recycling. For my capstone project, <laughs> for my capstone project, I must go around to each individual classroom and pick up its bottles weekly. This is not a difficult task, um, but what was always hard for me was interrupting class that was in session. Uh, sometimes, though, the, uh, the recycling bag isn't in an easy access point, so I have to run across the classroom in front of the teacher and try not to disturb. For the next uh, student to take on my capstone project, I number one, highly recommend this project to anyone out there in the seventh grade that is still looking for a project. Some suggestions, uh, make sure you hit every single room because if you don't, teachers start to complain. <laughs> Some more advice I could give in your assignment is uh, always get your stuff in on time. If you don't get things on time, then you lose valuable points and never, <laughs> ever put things off to the last minute. I learned that the hard way. Oh no, I have to study for the math, and oh yeah, that's science quiz, and I think you get my point. <laughs> there are several very important people I would like to thank for helping me along the way. I'd like to thank Mr. Perna for approving my capstone. Ms. Schwab for making sure that I get all my components together. Also, I would like to thank Mrs. L for supporting me and getting me in line every time I veered off track. Matt Mosing is another person I am thankful for, because every single time I had to go collect the bottles, he came and helped me. Uh, I'd like to thank Ms. Hurlicek for providing uh, recycling facts, my advising group, Jackson Montgomery, Caroline Landry, Sarah Lasevich, Julie Spillane, and Matt Mosing. They supported me and helped me with the recycling tip. And last but not least, all of you who have supported my capstone by recycling your bottles. I am so glad to have done my capstone with my group. Good luck to all the seventh graders, and thank you, and I hope you all have a great day.
thank you very much for that. And next up is Jackson Montgomery. Hello and good morning. My name is Jackson Montgomery. My capstone and project is on marine pollution. The ocean and its inhabitants have always drawn my interest. I was very discouraged to find out how much the ocean has been polluted. For example, there is a giant floating island of trash off the coast of California called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch is currently twice the size of Texas. It is growing. With this knowledge, I felt like I needed to take action. My goal of my project was three-pronged. Each prong of my project has a different way of tackling marine pollution. My first goal is to fundraise. My fundraising focused on an organization dedicated to preserving the world's coastlines and oceans from pollution. This organization is called the Ocean Conservancy. I set a goal of $200 and reached it by setting a raffle for a fish tank setup. Tickets were sold and placed in a jar. The winning ticket was drawn on November 1st. The Smith family received their tank soon after. My goal of $200 was surpassed by raising $210 in total. My second goal was to physically contribute to this cause. I volunteered for Coast Sleep at Salisbury Beach. Coast Sleep is an event where millions of people volunteer to clean up the world's coastline. My dad and I participated in this together. Armed with gloves, trash bags, and data sheets, we recorded every piece of trash we found. This is done so that the Coast Sleep organization can analyze what type of trash being left behind at a specific location. It was great to be a part of this, and above me are some pictures that my dad and I took. My last goal was to educate part of our school community. I visited grades one through three. For grades one and two, I read the little children's book on marine pollution. We then discussed my experience with Coast Week and how they can help keep the oceans clean. For grade three, I made a PowerPoint including the facts and figures from the 2011 Coast Week. My PowerPoint also touched upon the effects of marine pollution. All students seemed very interested in what I had to say. With any capstone project, there can be many obstacles. I feel very lucky because there weren't many from us. The only small obstacle I had to overcome was I did not initially receive a donation of a fish tank. I emailed several stores that sell tanks and fish, but never received any replies. Luckily, my backup plan is my grandfather. He offered to donate a fish tank setup because he felt my cause was important and wanted to help. As this was my only obstacle, I consider myself lucky. There are many positive results of my project. One being that Salisbury Beach is now much cleaner and Coastal has more data to analyze. The Ocean Conservancy now has more money to work with and they can make a huge difference in the world. Lastly, the more, more children are educated about marine pollution. Hopefully they will spread the word to friends and family. Working on my capstone project, I have learned many things about marine pollution and as well as myself. There are some jaw-dropping figures about marine pollution and its horrible effects. I learned that it is possible to complete and succeed a project of this magnitude by going through numerous steps. It is easier to break down a project like this and take your time on every detail. Trust me, this helps in the long run. I learned if you always put your best foot forward all the time, you will exceed your expectations. I would like to recognize some people for their help. My father for coming with me and providing transportation to Salisbury Beach. My mother should be recognized for her efforts as well. She provided transportation and assisted me in setting my raffle. Next, my grandparents, James and Patricia Fredrickson, should be recognized for their donation to my project. My capstone would have been difficult to complete without it. I would like to thank the teachers that allowed me to take the time out of their day so that I could come in. One of these teachers was Mrs. Erkovic. Mrs. Erkovic deserves a special recognition because in third grade, she encouraged me so much in science and I feel without her encouragement, I wouldn't have done this project. Thank you, Mrs. Erkovic, and thank you for everyone who listened. Next up, we have a group of ladies who work on a legacy project. Julia Spillane, Katie Grome, Madison Matatal, and Anna Soika. Good morning, students, parents, and faculty of the FCCPS. My name is Maddie Matatal, and standing here with me today is Anna Soika, Katie Grome, and Joyce Spillane. For our capstone project, we chose to take on the school garden. The school garden is a legacy project, which means that the project has been completed by previous eighth grade students. 
one of the challenges in working on a legacy project is that we needed to add to the work the previous eighth graders had done. So this year, our group decided to create a winter bed. We harvest our crops every few months. The vegetables we have grown include potatoes, snap peas, lettuce, radishes, beans, garlic, beets, herbs, carrots, and green peppers. We donate almost all of our harvested crops to the Franklin Food Pantry. The rest of the crops go to the school for Taste Tuesdays. In addition to our harvest, another part of our project is to create garden cards to sell the Mingle Jingle. It wasn't hard deciding what we wanted to do for our capstone project because we all enjoy working in our own garden at home. We also knew some of the students who were part of the garden group last year. The alumni helped us start out our capstone project and taught us each information about gardening, harvesting, and the food pantry. During our capstone project, we faced a few obstacles. One of the obstacles was that the hose in the back of the school by the garden bed wasn't working. At first, we didn't know how to water the plants because there was no other hose nearby. We were told that the plumber would be coming in a few days to fix it, so in the meantime, we had to come up with another plan. We decided to get five empty milk gallons and fill them up with water. When each person went to water the plants, they would use the five gallons of water. When the gallon jugs were empty, we had to go back into the school and fill them up by the yard sink. It worked out fine, we just needed a little bit of time to be watered. We ended up using the milk gallon for the whole summer because the, the hose didn't work until the beginning of September. Another obstacle we faced was with our food drive. Last spring, we hosted a food drive for the Franklin Food Pantry. Unfortunately, when it started, not a lot of people knew about our food drive, which meant we didn't get a lot of donations. Towards the end of the drive, we were worried that our donation bin wasn't that full. We got an idea on how to spread the word. We made an announcement on the intercom, we went to a few of the classrooms, and we all went home and asked some of our neighbors to donate. The next day, we had so many donations that they couldn't all fit in the box. We ended up getting tons of items for the Franklin Food Pantry, and they were very grateful for all our donations. Along with having obstacles throughout our project, we've also had an abundant amount of positive results. We've helped the food pantry and people who use the food pantry. We've assisted them by donating all of our produce to them and having food drives to them. We've collected an abundant amount of canned goods and supplies from the two food drives we have held. We've made a positive impact on their lives because not only are they getting food, but they are, are, they are getting healthy, nutritious, and fresh food. Another positive result was we earned $80 selling our garden cards to Mingle Jiggle. We also successfully created a winter garden bed. Gardening with the Katie Gardeners was also a huge success because it helped us with our job and also gave them a chance to learn about the garden and how to plant some seeds. Throughout the capstone process, we have learned how important it is to have healthy food and how good fresh food can be. We have also learned that food pantries are in need of food and supplies constantly, so it's important that donations are made often. We have learned that giving to a food pantry is giving to a family in need of support. We educated the students of BFCCPS in our community about our capstone project. One activity that we did was garden with one of the younger kindergarten classes. We gardened with them during the beginning of our capstone project. They helped us plant radishes and beans. We also educated the community of BFCCPS by having Taste Tuesdays. Taste Tuesdays were part of the legacy project from the previous garden. On, on Taste Tuesdays, we would collect the produce from the school garden, and then serve the healthy food to the students at the FCCPS. We also educated the Franklin community about our capstone project. On November 8th, we made garden cards, which are cards in which we made out of the pictures that we had taken. To make them presentable, we shaped some of the vegetables into faces. We had sorted the cards into different groups based on the picture. In the packets, we put six cards and six envelopes. The mango thing was a great success. We earned a total of $80. Throughout our capstone, we received a lot of guidance from our community. We would like to recognize Mrs. Schwab for helping and guiding us throughout this experience. She kept us on task and offered us assistance whenever she thought we needed it. She has been an amazing group leader to us throughout this project. We would also like to thank our advisors, Ms. Sylvan, Mrs. L, Ms. Wolf, Coach Simpson, and Coach Burke. They have made us work hard throughout the past year by making sure we completed all of our steps on time. Next, we would like to thank all of our parents for driving us to and from school during the summer to water the garden. Mr. Matatal helped us a lot by building the winter bed. Finally, we would like to thank Mr. Perna for allowing us to do the food drive throughout the past year. Thank you to everyone who has helped us make our capstone successful. You guys are all doing a great job. Uh,
yesterday's presentation, the fifth grade was here. And uh, when they were over one of the fifth graders said to me, Mr. Carter, I know what I want to do for my capstone project. I want to make sure all the chairs in the auditorium have cushions on them. <laughs> so until that capstone project is completed, we'll take a short break. Take two minutes, to stand, stay where you are, let me know when we're about to do I hope you enjoyed that short break. We have two more advising groups to hear from today, and then that will bring our 2013 capstone presentations to a close. Let's give a big round of applause for Mrs. Sobin. Good morning, everyone. I would like to say how proud I am of all the eighth graders this week for your bravery, your composure, and your hard work. To my advising group, Looks like they're still getting involved. I am impressed with your encouragement to one another, your cohesiveness, and your patience with the capstone process. I'd like to extend my congratulations to my advisee, Maddie Matatal, who did a great job leading off and closing for the garden group. And my first presenter is Alina. and students of the SCCPS. My name is Alina Buck and I'm in Mr. Callahan's 8th grade homeroom. For my capstone project, I focused on child dental care. I went to the BFCCPS kindergarten classroom and did an educational lesson on their proper oral hygiene. I chose this capstone project for many reasons. I wanted to work with little children and involve them in my capstone. My mother is an RDH, or a registered dental hygienist, and my aunt is a DMD, or a dental medical doctor. They both have a passion for making people's smiles beautiful, so I wanted to help the younger children with their smiles. My first step in this long process was to start contacting Mrs. Jumas and Mrs. Tankin to see if there was a possibility for me to come to their classes and talk to their kindergarten students. Once they said there was a possibility, I started thinking of possible lesson plans. I started doing research to see what I would teach them. I consulted my aunt and my mother. They both said that the most important issue is the consumption of sweet and acidic foods that wear down the children's enamel and eventually rot their teeth. They said that most children do not brush the proper way. Many young children brush back and forth instead of circular motions with the correct way. When I went to the classrooms, I started with a demonstration. I used a giant tooth model and with a toothbrush and showed the kindergartners the right way to brush their teeth. I explained that they should be brushing their teeth for at least two minutes twice a day, in the morning and at night. After the demonstration, I read the book Going to the Dentist by Youthborn's First Experiences, which is about the children's first trip to the dentist's office. We then sat down and colored pictures of teeth and cartoon toothbrushes. After the lesson, I passed out a worksheet that the kids could take home. The purpose of the worksheet was to color in a moon when they brushed their teeth at night and color in a sun when they brushed their teeth in the morning. I also passed out an information sheet for the children's parents to read. The handout described what we did in class that day. It also described the children's wearing down of the enamel by certain foods, the importance of regular dentist visits, and what they can do to help keep their children's smiles beautiful. While well, I did face some obstacles, they were all very small. My initial plan was to travel to a local preschool in Franklin and raise money to buy supplies for the seniors at Forge Hill. I knew the preschool very well because my sister had attended there for two years and I had done previous community service there. However, this was way too much work for one person to handle. I was neglecting to start all the planning that it would require. In the end, I decided to stay within BFCCPS, which worked out much better. This gave me more time to spend planning for the kindergartners' lesson. In addition, I was having trouble picking a book that the kindergartners would enjoy. I was having two different choices, just going to the dentist by Mercer Mayer and going to the dentist by Usborne's first experiences. I was having difficulty choosing the book that the kindergartners would enjoy, but also learn some valuable things at the same time. I finally consulted my sister, who is a kindergartner, and we decided together that going to the dentist by Usborne's first experiences was the best choice. I also waited until the last minute to get the gifts for the kindergartners. This included about 50 toothbrushes, toothpaste, and floss and gift bags. Finally, I ended up getting them on the day of my lesson with the kindergartners, which was not a very wise decision. When I completed my capstone project, the kids effectively knew how to brush my teeth. When I came back two weeks later to the classroom and gave them their prizes, I reviewed with them the main key points from the lesson last week. I asked them questions like, what are the proper brushing motions, and how many minutes did you brush your teeth for? 
When I asked the questions and everyone got them right, I was extremely happy to know that the kids paid attention and were very involved in my project. In the conclusion of my capstone project, I learned that working alone was very beneficial to me. It was easy to complete all the planning and time arrangements all by myself, without worrying about a partner to run the plans by. Although my original plan was to work with someone else, it can be very difficult with a very big and time-consuming project. I also learned that it was very good with children, and when you love what you are talking about or teaching, you can be very effective to those around you. <coughs> I would like to thank many people that greatly contributed to the successful outcome of the project. I would like to thank my mother, Mama Kapat, who gave me this idea of helping children. I would like to thank my aunt, Jamila Khalil, who gave me the materials I needed to help me with my lesson plan. I would also like to recognize Mrs. Jumas, Mrs. Tagan, Mrs. Frangillo, and Mrs. Sheeran, whom without their time, effort, and help, this would not be remotely possible. I also want to thank Ms. Sobin, one of the best advisors ever, because without her guidance, I would probably be a wreck. I would also like to thank my advising group, who gave me brilliant ideas. And finally, I would like to thank Mr. Callahan, Ms. Kelly Hollis, Mrs. DiMartino, and Ms. Harlochek, who all graciously gave me class time to go into the kindergartners. Thank you for all your time, and remember to always smile. Dothers had their key. Hello, fellow students, parents, and faculty of the BFCCPS. My name is Heather Keith, and for my capstone project, I raise money and awareness for the North Pacific right whale. I wanted to show my love of animals to the community for this year-long and challenging project by doing something for the marine animals, because I knew many populations of the larger animals living in the ocean were vastly decreasing because of hunting and pollution. So I did some research at home, and I found that the most endangered whale species is the North Pacific right whale. Right whale. The North Pacific right whale. I also found an organization that helps whales and other endangered marine animals called Save the Whales Foundation. When I searched on their website about the donations were permitted, my mom told me that I could send in the money and ask to fund it for the research, the research for a specific species. And at that moment, I knew that that was exactly what I was going to do. To educate the community, I decided to make bookmarks to sell during lunch at the end of November. Each bookmark contains the logo of Save the Whales Foundation and a picture of either North Pacific right whale or marine life in general on the front. On the back, I printed a list of six things that people can do to help marine life, or what I called six fin facts, pun on fun facts, about the North Pacific right whale. Making the bookmarks was difficult to do at first. I thought of different designs and different ways to make them. One of my original ideas was to sew two pieces of fabric together and embroider an image of a, right, of a whale on each bookmark. But I decided if I were to make bookmarks like that, I would not easily be able to educate people about the whales this way. That was when I got the idea of printing out the designs and eliminating all the book, all the printouts to make my bookmarks more decorative. And my mom taught me how to talk. To make my bookmarks more decorative, my mom and my aunt taught me how to make a tassel. A tassel is an ornament that is made of a bunch of strands of yarn gathered together at the knot of a longer strand of yarn. I made my tassels out of three different colors of yarn, aqua, lavender, and multicolored blue, which is the yarn. The yarn was given different, the yarn was made with different shades of blue in it. So of course there were some obstacles that I ran into while completing my capstone project. The main problem was the fact that I did not do anything for this project over the summer like I was supposed to due to overnight camp for, more, for four weeks and other personal difficulties. Because of this, I fell behind schedule from the start. I set a goal to have the bookmarks done by October, but instead they were ready in November. If I had done some book, if I had done some work on my capstone over the summer break and finished making the bookmarks in, on time, I would have been able to run another event that I originally planned, a raffle contest. In the raffle, I would plan to give away a plush North Atlantic right whale, along with tickets to see an, an event at the New England Aquarium. 
But since the book months weren't ready to sell in October, I didn't have time to love the raffle contest. However, I accomplished making 90 bookmarks in total, costing $1 each, and several key people gave me extra donations. I achieved my goal, my goal of making at least $100 for my sale, with, $5, with at least $5 to spare, but I had hoped to make $100 more for my raffle. All in all, I raised a total of $105.05. And on December 27th, my mom signed my mom signed a check for that account amount so the money could be donated. That night, I wrote a letter to Maris Sidensticker II, the proprietor of Save the Whales. The letter and the check were put in an envelope and sent in the mail the very next day. I know I should be proud of my results, which I am, and I wish to continue making donations for Save the Whales. I've learned valuable, yeah, valuable life lessons about achieving mistakes and courage because of my capstone project. I would like to thank my mom and my aunt for helping me make the donation. I also want to thank my advising group and Ms. Sovin for their wonderful support along the way. And for the seventh graders, I wish there will you will all you will all run into procrastination and many obstacles. But always find, but you will always find a way to improve. So thank you all who donated to my cause, and thank you for listening today. Our next presenter is Sean McNeil. Faculty of BFCCPS, I'm Sean McNeil, I'm here to present my capstone. I help my community by spreading awareness on the importance of musical education for schools in the U.S. I completed my capstone by doing a handful of helpful things. Before I talk about that, I wanted to talk about why I chose this capstone. I chose to pick this topic because music has always been important to me, and I feel that kids should be learning music while in school. I feel that kids should not only learn the basics of music, music theory, but also play instruments such as the guitar or the piano. I believe that students should also learn the history of many great musicians and composers and how they impacted the world with their music. It is obvious I have a passion for music and I love the classes here. However, I noticed that in music class, when we were learning piano, the headphones were in short supply and in also good condition. So, for the first part of my capstone, I made a go to replace the old, broken headphones with brand new, high quality ones. To do this, I decided that moving out would be the best way to raise money. But, there was a problem with scheduling, so I decided to share moving out with another student, Lily Levine. She told me that the movie she was showing was Finding Nemo for a, plot, for a capstone on uh, Boston Harbor. We decided to show it together and we set the date to Friday, October 19th. However, there was a problem with informing people about the movie night because we didn't hang up posters in the pink shoe with last minute. So, we didn't have a biggest crowd as we hoped. A few people did show up, and thanks to the substantial amount of treats, Lily and her family supplied, we made about $80. We split the money and I received $40. With that money, along with a donation from my family, I was able to buy 25 sets of headphones, which is enough for an entire class. To raise awareness for my capstone, I chose to make flyers about music education and hand out to grades 5 through 8. I give them out to those grades because they are able to join our school's music programs. I create a flyer during my own flow period. I have few issues though. I had to print out 175 color copies of my flyer, and I couldn't do it at school. I thought I could just print them at Staples, but that would cost $400 to do that. At the last minute, my dad was able to print out 200 color copies at his work. I handed them out to the classroom a few days before music break. In the flyer, I talked about why music education is important in schools. I said, I said that it was a great way to express yourself, and it could teach you skills that will help you later in life. I talked about how playing an instrument can help you focus in school. I also talked about what kids can do to get involved. I said that children can join classes at the Plainton School of Performing Arts, or they can join one of our after-school classes, such as the Spring Musical. I hope that got many students excited to join music classes. I have, overcome, I have overcome many obstacles in my capstone. When Lily and I did the movie night, I was originally going to show Toy Story 3. I already had a paragraph from the pink sheet about my movie night. When I changed it to Finding Nemo, the pink sheet still said Toy Story 3. We were able to change it at the last minute. I also had trouble with the flyer that advertised the movie night. I couldn't finish it on time, so I didn't end up, so I didn't end up putting it around the school. 
We didn't announce him at lunch a few days before the movie night, so we didn't have any papers for the children to bring home. Because, these, because of these obstacles, not as many people showed up for the movie night. But we did have a few people, and we were able to make a good amount of money for our causes. Mr. Hedo, will you please join me up here for this part of my presentation? I believe that to learn music education, you need the proper equipment. So, my main goal for my capstone was to purchase brand new headphones for our school and replace the old broken ones. As I said before, they provide 25 sets of headphones for the music department at BFCCPS. This was, I was originally going to buy 50, but if only a profit of $40 at the movie night is still a good turnout. I want to present these headphones to Mr. Hida, and I hope they will last for many years at this school. I'd like to thank a number of people who helped me complete my capstone. Their hard work uh, helped a lot in the past several months. I'd like to thank my advisor, Ms. Sobin, and my advising group for helping me put everything together. Even when I showed up with nothing to advising, I still got some work done. Ms. Sobin allowed me to work on my fly or my PowerPoint in the computer lab. I also like to thank Mr. Perna and Ms. Anna, who checked over all my work and made sure it's as good as possible. Also, uh, also thanks to Lily Levine and her parents for helping me with the movie night, and everyone who showed up to the movie night. Without the help I received from these people, I wouldn't have finished my capstone. Thank you. Next up is Caroline O'Keefe. Hello, students, parents, and faculty. I am Carolina Keith, and I'm a student here at BFCCPS. I'm an eighth grader nearing the end of my capstone project. For my capstone project, I focus on animal abuse. This project is very close to my heart because my dog Mila was a rescue dog from Forever Homes Rescue Shelter in Medfield, Massachusetts. Forever Homes Rescue New England is an all-volunteer, nonprofit organization. Their mission is to find loving families for homeless and unwanted dogs that they have rescued from high-kill shelters or abusive and neglectful situations. When we first brought our dog home, she was very well behaved, but we did notice that any time we put our hands out to her, she would look very scared as if expecting us to hit her. Obviously, she had been abused. This is scary to think about and very sad also. Now, Mila is two years old and she is a very loving dog. This shows what a shelter such as Forever Homes can do for a dog and how they can give them a fresh start. I'm so thankful to Forever Homes for giving abused, neglected, and abandoned and helpless dogs a second chance at a great life. I thought to myself, why not give back to them and help them get the supplies they need to make sure the dogs have a good environment to stay in while at the shelter. Unfortunately, when some of these dogs are saved, they are so hurt mentally and physically, nobody will adopt them and they have to be put to sleep to make room for the other dogs. This process of putting a dog to sleep because of not enough supplies or space is known as the euthanasia. The euthanasia rate in the United States alone has gone up a lot in the past few years. If more people are educated about the warning signs of an abused dog and how to report it, the euthanasia rate would decrease. I decided that one part of my capstone would be to raise money for the shelter. I sent out an email to family and friends and put a letter in my neighbor's mailboxes explaining the, my project and asking for donations. I also set up a donation box in my dad's office building and sent an email to his co-workers asking for them to donate. I started this entire process in early October and kept the donation box at my dad's office for about a month. My dad continued to receive donations after we've taken the block down. After counting all of the money from my family, neighbors, and my dad's coworkers, I was thrilled to have received $331 in donations. Another part of my capstone project I decided was going to be to hold an assembly at the school in which a representative from Forever Homes would come in. I emailed the shelter back and forth for a while, planning the assembly. The person I got in touch with was, for, was Joanne. I learned that the money that, that the shelter received from the purchase of the dogs was used mainly to transport the dogs from other states. I wanted to help contribute more and that the dogs would also benefit from having toys and blankets and treats. Also, the necessities, food, water, and shampoo to wash the dogs. Joanne was very helpful in answering my questions and also happy to come in to speak with the students at the OCCPS for an assembly. As part of the assembly, I asked her if she can get permission to bring in a dog from the shelter. First, I had to get permission from Mr. Perna to hold the assembly and to schedule a date. We scheduled it for November 30th, which was originally going to be after the eighth grade's math musical. 
but the musical ended up being rescheduled for a later date anyway, which was much easier because I only had to be focusing on my project. Also, it would be better because the audience wouldn't have to be sitting for so long, so the students were more focused on it. The assembly lasted about 20 minutes. Joanne brought in a dog named Smiley. She was very well behaved in front of all the students. At the end of the assembly, I handed Joanne a check made out to Forever Homes for $331. She was very happy and excited and grateful for the donation, and I'm sure that the money went to great use. During this whole casting process, I've learned a lot of important lessons. My organizational skills have definitely improved since last February. I feel that I have matured over this time. I'm not usually so great at long-term projects because I have a hard time keeping track of my assignments. The fact that Capstone has nine steps really helped me by splitting it up. I'm very proud of my accomplishments and I've learned a lot about myself through this experience. I want to thank many people that have helped me along the way. Mom and Dad for driving me to the shelter and giving me ideas. Thank you for all your support and help throughout this entire Capstone project. Ms. Silva and for your patience and support. If it wasn't for your help and coordination, I would not have accomplished all that I have. We know our group can get very distracted at times, but you always get us back on track. Thank you to Mr. Perna for helping me schedule my assembly. To my advising group, you guys have always been great supporters and giving me ideas along the way. Thank you for always being willing to help with whatever you can. Finally, I would like to thank Joanne and Forever Homes for making time to come in. Thank you all and have a great rest of your day. I would like to welcome Ethan Rio. Good morning, students, parents, teachers, and faculty. My name is Ethan Rio, and I'm in Ms. Sobin's advisory group. For my captain assignment, I carried out a legacy project started last year by an alum named Sean Lockhart, who created the Lost and Found and Gym Share project. In order to successfully complete my project, I was required to improve upon what Sean Locker had achieved, which was not an easy task. Ever since I heard Sean Locker's capstone speech more than one year ago, I felt that his lost and found and legacy project was definitely an option for me. I felt that this was an ongoing problem at our school, and I wanted to continue to improve upon it. Also, from the beginning of the assignment, I wanted to complete a project that would directly and immediately benefit our school. For my action plan, I came up with three goals that I believed I could achieve by the end of my given time frame. The first of these was to hold two surveys asking questions about the lost and found the gym share. The goal is to help remind the school community of their locations. My second goal is uh, to clean out the lost and found up to seven times in the 2012-2013 school year. And finally, the third goal is to add two bins to lost and found, one for footwear and another for sports equipment. Throughout the course of my project, I encountered several obstacles that I had never considered in the planning process. For example, before the school year had ended, I organized a lost and found cleanout. In order to achieve high turnout, I announced the cleanout as an event at the Pink Sheet. But in the end, only about six people showed up, which meant that a couple hundred high quality, high quality articles of clothing had to be donated. The most frustrating obstacle that I faced throughout the course of my project was the actual organizing of the lost and found. Almost every Thursday, before or after advising, I had to clean up and organize the lost and found. This is because every week, more and more belongings would be strewn all over the ground. Whoever had searched for a personal belonging removed all the items from their places, they never cleaned up after themselves. I found myself reorganizing the same exact items every week. By the end of seventh grade, Mrs. Schwab noticed a large number of spearware items would, uh, that were turned out from the lost and found, and they were getting placed in the gym chair. Mrs. Schwab, being Mrs. Schwab, was very gracious in helping me, I proposed the idea of sending fabric markers home for this year's spearware orders. It sounded like a great idea, great idea to me, so Mrs. Schwab then referred me to Mrs. Haggard, a parent at the school, uh, and who's in charge of this year's spirit wear order. I contacted Mrs. Haggerty, and she informed me that there would soon be a small gathering in her house where she and a group of other parents from our school would be organizing and packing the orders into individual bags by family. My mother and I had purchased 120 fabric markers to over 100 orders, and we spent about an hour and a half placing them into the bags and organizing the bags. Six packs of 20 or 120 markers cost upwards of $113. Fortunately, however, my hot chocolate fundraising over two days covered the largest expense. I can say with absolute certainty that the fabric markers worked, because so far this year, not one new spirit wear clothing item has wound up in the loss of fact. At the end of it all, I've achieved the majority of my goals. The one goal that, not that I did not fully accomplish is that I only handed out one of the two surveys. 
second goal is to purchase two bins that I've added to the lost and found. I've already added those. Finally, the third goal is still a work in progress. I'll continue cleaning up the lost and found until I graduate or until one very lucky seventh grader takes over this project. <laughs> I believe that this project has benefited me in many ways. Obviously, it's helped me develop my organizational skills. I can't recall another span of time where I've folded as many sweaters, sweatshirts, and jackets as I've done the past year in order to make the lost and found tidy and organized to consolidate extra space, which is very, very important part of the school. There are certain few people who have helped me greatly over the course of this project. Most importantly, my parents. Without their help, nothing that is remotely related to my project could be completed. Secondly, I'd like to recognize Mrs. Schwab individually for her constant help throughout the course of the project. She helped me identify a need and coached me along the way, coached me along the way to meet that need. Additionally, I would also like to thank my advising group and advisor, Ms. Sobin, for their help. I find that on those Thursday afternoons when we're all cramped in that little room, we accomplish the most. And lastly, I would like to thank Mrs. Haggerty, Mrs. Lanowski, and Mr. Kern. Without Mrs. Haggerty allowing me to place the fabric markers into the many orders at her house, I believe the gym share would be overflowing right now. Mr. Pernet and Mrs. Lanowski both deserve recognition because they truly act as secondary advisors, checking in with us to make sure everything is going according to plan, and even giving suggestions and ideas to use towards our project. Good luck to the seventh grade, and thank you very much for your time and your patience this morning. And last but certainly not least, Hannah Winokur. and faculty. My name is Hannah Winokur, and for my capstone project, I focus on diabetes and spreading awareness about this disease. Diabetes is a widely spreading problem in our world, and I chose to do something about it. Since there's no cure, the best thing that I could do was make sure everyone in my community was educated. I chose this specific project because it's something that I can relate to and is very close to home. I have diabetes, as well as my dad, who's been living with it for 36 years, since he was 12 years old. Even though diabetes is awful, it's become a part of who I am. To educate my community, I held an assembly for my peers and teachers. In this assembly, I taught students the basic components of diabetes, how it affects your daily lifestyle, and most of all, about living with diabetes, how I live with diabetes. I also decided that everyone should have a knowledge of diabetes, young and old. So with this idea, I visited two second grade classrooms at BSCCPS and did an activity with them about the importance of diabetes. I read a book to them called Taking Diabetes to School. As young kids, this is something that they can relate to. After, I, was given, I gave a, a piece of paper to each of the kids and they wrote or drew what diabetes means to them. Outside of my school community, I collected small items such as markers or crayons for the Jocelyn Diabetes Center in Boston for their playroom. I asked for donations for the playroom instead of getting gifts for my bat mitzvah that I completed in April of 2012. While I was planning these activities, I faced many obstacles, one of which could have set me back my whole capstone project, communication errors. While trying to contact Dawson Diabetes Center or my diabetes clinic, all of the information was lost in the email. In addition to my loss of information and contact with Jocelyn, I also lost important emails sent to the teachers of the classes that I wanted to do my activity with. My activities with the classrooms had to be canceled until further notice because the teachers did not receive the information required for the activity to take place. Fortunately, the emails were found and I was able to continue with their classes even though it was much later than I had originally planned. Another obstacle that I came across was trying to do too much at once. While in the process of creating my activity with the younger grades, I had my original plan was to educate four classes, but due to my academics, I could not be excused long enough to present. My activity also included a coloring sheet about what diabetes meant to the kids that I taught. But because of all the students that I was planning to teach, not enough copies of the page were able to print in the amount of time that I had. I found it hard to keep up with all the planning that was involved. So, in order to stay on track, I only taught two of the four original classes. The last obstacle that I faced was organization. While in the process of creating my activities for my capstone, a teacher came to me and asked if I would like to provide a lesson to their class on healthy eating while trying to incorporate my capstone in the lesson. I agreed, but was soon overwhelmed because I was unorganized for the lesson. I began to lose important papers, and I had to postpone the visit until everything was done correctly and in the right order. 
My classroom had many positive results despite the obstacles, one of which that more students know about diabetes and the effect it has on people. If you or a family member doesn't live in a diabetic environment, you may not know what diabetes even is. I also made a difference in my community by exposing younger kids to diabetes so they will be prepared in the future for whatever it brings. Students expanded on their knowledge of diabetes by learning things that they never knew before. While completing the last of my capstone projects, I had tons of learning experiences. First, that teaching takes confidence and you should be prepared with whatever you are to present. While working with the second graders, I planned to make up my speech in my head, but thinking twice from past reference, I decided that it didn't work so well, and last minute, I wrote it all down. I also learned that when relying on the internet and email, you should always have a plan B. Whether your information is lost or not, you should always have a backup plan. Planning activities is a long process, and following through with dates and times is imperative. I know now that I needed to be much more clear with what my plan was and how I was going to go about doing it. I would like to thank many people who helped me in completing my capstone project. I could not have done it without all of you. My parents for coming up with great ideas, Jocelyn Diabetes Clinic for accepting donations, my advisor, Ms. Gogan, for being my in-school inspiration, my advising group for being supportive and encouraging, and Mr. Perna for helping me with the preparation of my assembly. In conclusion, on behalf of our advising group, we would like to present Ms. Gogan with this. Thank you, that's so nice. Um, congratulations, a job well done. I have the pleasure of introducing our final advisor for our final group, the wonderful Ms. Wolf. Hello, everyone. I've had the pleasure of working with seven wonderful students for the past three years. We have worked hard together, and we've had a lot of fun together. Uh, one thing that we did in sixth grade, they decided to nickname our group the Wolf Pack. <laughs> so Katie Groom, Katie Groom was our first friend to go today, and she did a wonderful job with the school community garden. Our next uh, Wolf Pack member is Miss Lila Kaplan. <laughs> Yes, my name is Lila Kaplan, and for my capstone project, I ran the capstone club at the YMCA for kids who participate in the Integration Initiative. The Integration Initiative is a program that the YMCA runs for special needs kids. I wanted to add to this, so I ran a swimming program in August, a, an arts and crafts program in September, a cooking program in October, and a movie night in November. At each of these events, there are about five or six integration kids and about six or seven Americans that came to help. Each program was an hour long, and we focused on the theme of the program, which was also flexible if people finished early. When it came time to choose a capstone project, I had many ideas, and I didn't know which one I wanted to focus on. I wasn't sure if I wanted to help a specific person reach a goal or help raise money and awareness for a big foundation. But after thinking about it, I realized that I want to work with special needs kids. I want to do this project because my mom has worked with special needs kids since I could remember. So I'm comfortable with working with different types of kids. I also really want to make a difference in someone's day. When I was thinking on my project, I was also thinking of what, what, how I want to educate the community and what would be the best way to do it. I had originally planned to read a, the kindergartner's book about autism to teach them that it is okay if people are different. But this did not happen because I could not find an appropriate book and scheduling was tough. But I did educate the community about autism in a few different ways. One way was that I made a pamphlet to pass out in the front office about autism. I also educated my community by having my peers volunteer at projects where they could interact with different types of kids. I feel that from my capstone project, people now, normal, now know more about autism and special needs. During my capstone project, I learned many things about special needs kids and autism. I learned that there are many different types of disabilities and that you might not even know if some kids have a disability, while other kids need a lot of help doing everyday tasks. Um, while working on my pamphlet, I learned that it is more common for boys to be diagnosed with autism than girls. 
There is nothing you can do to prevent autism, but doctors and researchers are working to find ways to prevent it and ways to uh, stop it. It is also very important to be, for people to be understanding and accepting of people who are different. Over the course of my project, there were many obstacles that I faced. Some were harder for me to get over than others. My first project was held during the, the last week of August, so it was hard for many people to come because they were still on vacation. Due to the low number of participants, this event almost got canceled by the last. Another obstacle I faced throughout my whole process was not reaching my goal of 15 volunteers and 10 integration kits. But I, in the end, I think that this goal did not happen for a reason, if it, because if there were 25 kids in total, it would be very hard for the volunteers to get to know the integration kids as well as they did. The last obstacle I faced was communicating with the integration coordinators at the Y. We communicated mostly by emails, but some questions uh, that were asked need to be answered quickly, and since email is not efficient, they were not answered as quickly as they should have been. But in the end, everything worked out and everything got answered. Obstacles are only bumps in the road. If you let them stop you, nothing will get accomplished. But you need to learn how to, uh, you need to figure out a way to get past them and move on. If you don't let them hold you back, they will not affect your whole project. Seeing everyone happy and enjoying themselves at the end of each project really showed me that my hard work had paid off. Some advice that I would like to give to the seventh graders as they start their capstone project is to not let other people change your project. You can take some of their suggestions into consideration, but really do what you're passionate about. Because when you look back at your capstone experience, you want to be happy with the end result. A lot of people helped me get through my capstone project. I would like to thank the following people for all their help. I would like to thank my mom and dad for giving me ideas for my project, Barbara Manu P.I. and Karen Friedman, the integration coordinators at the Hawkmock Area YMCA, all my friends who came and volunteered at each of my programs, my advisor, Ms. Wolf, and my advising group for helping me with all the steps of the capstone. Thank you and have a nice day. or just relaxed by the ocean. Over 38 years ago, this was a different story. The Boston Harbor had been subjected to illegal dumping into the ocean. It was polluted, unsafe, and all wildlife had deserted this wasteland. TBHA set out to clean the Boston Harbor and made it what it is today. Unfortunately, waterfront storms, which were caused by climate change, threatened to destroy all their hard work. To counter these storms, TBHA is working to reduce the amount of climate change. Climate change is caused by greenhouse gases getting caught in the Earth's atmosphere, trapping the energy from the sun. This makes the temperature rise. As the temperature rises, the ice in the North and South Poles melts. When the ice melts, this causes the sea levels to rise, which causes flooding and storms. To fight climate change, you need to reduce greenhouse gases, which are caused by fumes that are produced when factories burn fossil fuels, such as oil. Of course, they are also working to stormproof the surrounding areas to directly defend themselves against waterfront storms. To help TBHA, I hold multiple fundraisers and raise awareness. My first fundraiser was a raffle. I asked for donations from local businesses to raffle off. My dad and I called various businesses and personally visited multiple businesses. By the end of the day, we would collected $300 worth of gift cards to raffle. Then I sold tickets at the Fall Festival in downtown Franklin. The first few hours didn't go so well because where I had set up was far away from the other businesses that were participating in the fall festival. So I moved closer to the center of downtown and business picked up. I sold tickets for three hours and raised about $120. I also sold tickets at Medway Shaw's. Franklin Shaw's was closed every time we called them and we were never able to get a hold of the manager. So when we called Medway and we were able to get on the phone with the manager, we scheduled the date. When we went to sell tickets there, however, they had a sign of contract that said we could not solicit shoppers, so it was extremely difficult to sell raffle tickets. So although I sold tickets for four hours, I raised less money than at the fall festival. 
Both times I tried to sell raffle tickets, it rained, so there weren't a lot of people who came to either venue. Also, I was selling tickets outside, so the poster that I had made kept getting wet and falling over from the wind. Another fundraiser I did was I shared a movie night with Sean McNeil. At the movie, at the movie night, I sold raffle tickets, concessions, and charged for admission. The movie we showed was Finding Nemo. We decided on this movie because it represented my capstone project and because it involved sea life. About 20 people came to my movie night. That was my goal for the amount of people to come, so I was glad it worked out. Finally, I made a donation draw for my dad's office, HFF, in Boston. I sent an email to all of his colleagues for donations. Many of them donated, and I raised more than I had hoped for. I originally thought I wouldn't make much from the draw, about $40. Thankfully, a lot of my dad's colleagues took an interest in my cause and donated a significant amount of money, and I raised over $100. Along with raising awareness through my fundraisers, I placed an informational flyer in the paint sheet, which described the, what the Boston Harbor Association does. Within my fundraisers, I raised awareness by talking to businesses while asking for donations, talking to people who are interested in buying a raffle ticket at my movie night, and through the email that I sent to my dad's colleagues. Although capstone was difficult and stressful, I accomplished a lot for my capstone. My original fundraising goal was $1,000. I never did reach this goal, but I raised $700 for the Boston Harbor Association, and I also raised awareness through fundraising and my flyer and the paint sheet. Because of my hard work and the amount of money I raised for the Boston Harbor Association, they recently named me as a role model for young people who want to make a difference in the world. From this project, I learned how hard I can work, and I also learned that by showing fortitude, I can get through any issue. I learned a lot about my cause and how something that seems so insignificant, like a storm, can ruin somebody's life, and that, and that there is a way to stop it. I also learned about the Boston Harbor and the transformation it went through, and with enough motivation, any goal can be achieved. I'd like to thank my mom, my dad, Mrs. Wolf, the Wolf Pack, my advising group, Mr. Perna, Ms. Zilnaski, Sean McNeil, Molly St. Germain, Mrs. Dreyer, Vivian Lee, the president of TBHA, everybody who bought tickets for my raffle, came to my movie night, and all the businesses were donating to my raffle. Thank you. teachers, family, and friends. My name is Drew Miller, and for my capstone project, I decided to help the Big Brothers Big Sisters Foundation in the greater Boston area. I chose this topic because in my own household, we've been giving our used clothing to the Big Brothers Big Sisters for as long as I remember. The foundation collects donated clothing and sells them, and they use the proceeds to support mentoring projects for the greater Boston area. This inspired me to do the same for my capstone project as I've been doing at home, but on a much larger scale, of course. I was inspired by the foundation to start a mentoring project of my own here at BFCCPS. Uh, Mrs. Donowski and Mrs. L both agreed that I needed something more hands-on in addition to the clothing drive. I brainstormed my parents and we came up with a reading club for first graders which would include a mentoring component. I presented this idea to Mrs. Donowski and she approved. I started with a clothing drive. I spoke with the, I spoke with the representative from the foundation and they delivered two large boxes and donation forms. I situated the boxes in the modular and outside Mrs. Ward's classroom. The drive lasted throughout the month of November. I advertised and made my project known by word of mouth throughout the BFCCPS community, as well as an announcement in our pink sheet, which is dispersed to all parents. By the end of the month, my two boxes were overflowing. I scheduled a pickup through my contact with the Big Brothers Big Sisters, and one of the workers from the organization picked them up. They took, public, they took pictures for their public relations newsletter to encourage other students to help their organization as well. The second component to my project was a reading or mentoring club. I handed out flyers to the first grade classes and spoke to them about the club. It involved reading books with a moral and a discussion of how that moral has affected their lives. We met in the art room on Wednesdays during lunch and recess, and about one third of the first grade showed up. An example of one class was the reading and discussion of a book dealing with honesty. After work, we discussed what true honesty means. I also planned an activity where the kids drew an illustration showing the instance in which their honesty was tested. I educated others on the folks in my capstone project in two ways. First, I raised awareness for my flyer that I submitted into the pink sheet. Secondly, I visited the first grade classes and spoke to them about the class and how it would be beneficial to them. I encountered a few obstacles for my capstone project. 
One of them was when I received a yellow light for my topic approval. At this stage of my project, I was only planning to organize a clothing drive. But after discussing ideas with my parents and my advisor, Ms. Wolf, we decided to incorporate a mentoring and reading club component for the first grade. Another obstacle is keeping in contact with the marketing coordinator of the foundation. There are many times when I miss calls at school, only to come home, call back, and find out that the office is closed. My project had many positive results. First, the clothing drive that I planned was a great success. I received many donations, and the driver that came to pick up the clothes at the end of November is very excited with the amount of clothes I had collected. As I said, they took some pictures and are publishing my story in their newsletter. My second component, the reading club for first graders, was also a success. Every time we met, the kids were always very excited. They also behaved themselves very well during the class as well. I believe that they left there with a greater understanding of right and wrong. A strong moral compass helps people make better students and in turn better citizens. This class helped reinforce that idea in conjunction with what is taught at home. I learned a lot through my capstone project. When donating at home, I was not aware of all that the Big Brothers Big Sisters Foundation does for my community. Through this project, I gained an understanding of their mission and was moved by it. Being the youngest in my family, I never had the opportunity to be a role model to a younger sibling. During the mentoring class, I finally had that opportunity and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'd like to thank Ms. Wolf, my advisor, for helping me every step of the way, my advising group, the Wolf Pack, for their support, my parents for their great ideas and never-ending support of me and my project, Mr. Perna for his help and advice, and Mrs. Olnowski for taking the time to review my project. My capstone project has, moved, has proved to be of benefit to the community as well as within our school. It has been an enjoyable experience, too. I hope future 8th grade students will find this experience to be as constructive as I have. Thank you.
Filming us at the bin in the school foyer to collect movies during my DVD drive, there wasn't a lot of space to keep it because of other capstone projects, so I had to put it in the corner behind the door where people kept slamming the door on it and it got damaged. To overcome this, I had to move the bin to a new place next to the door. Another obstacle I had was when I wanted to invite a group of friends over to make holiday cards, a lot of them were unavailable or away on vacation. So I just had my friends over who were available, and we ended up, we ended up making a good amount of cards. The, the last obstacle I encountered was that there are two women working at Children's Hospital named Nicole, and I got the first Nicole that I had delivered the DVDs to, mixed up with another Nicole. But I eventually realized that we weren't contacting the same Nicole when I was going to deliver the cards. I was able to set it up by emailing the original Nicole again before I dropped off the cards. Throughout this process, I learned a lot about ch children's needs and myself. One of the things that I learned was that sometimes you don't need to get to donate big or expensive gifts to make people happy. They appreciate small gifts such as movies and cards. I also thought that it was going to be very hard to run a DVD drive and make cards so quickly but it wasn't that difficult, and it was worth it to make a lot of kids happy. I would like to thank a lot of people for helping me throughout this whole process. I would like to thank my mom and dad for supporting me and driving me everywhere. I would like to sincerely thank all of the people that donated movies to my DVD drive. Without your help, my capstone may not have been successful. I would like to thank Nicole at Children's Hospital for her time, keeping in touch with me, and delivering the movies and holiday cards to the children. I would like to thank Katie Grom, Grace Bremner, and Ma St. Germain for everything that they helped me with. And I would also like to thank Mrs. Lonesky, Mr. Perna, and my advisor, Ms. Wolf, and my advising group, the Wolf Pack, for all of their help and support. Thank you. I just wanted to quickly mention we have two more Wolf Pack members that will be presenting at a later date. Jack Sullivan and Vishal Turavidi. Congratulations, eighth graders. You guys all did an amazing job. So ladies and gentlemen, you've been a fantastic audience today. Um, but before we go, uh, just like our eighth graders thanked people, I have a couple of quick thank yous. Um, I want to take a moment to thank all of our parents, not only for coming today, um, but for all the support that you've given these students throughout this process. Hopefully, um, I know community service is one of the reasons that you sent your children here, and this capstone project is not successful without all of your support and help, so thank you. If you heard it from the students, but I also want to uh, extend my personal thanks to the seven advisors, Mrs. Sobin, Mr. Heater, Coach Burke and Coach Simpson, Mrs. Lourivier, Ms. Wolf, and Mrs. Fallon. that helps them get through this process so successfully. I also want to take a moment and thank again Ann Honor, who's our capstone coordinator, who does work behind the scenes all year long to help get the kids ready for this special day, but also has been a great help to make sure that this assembly and the special lunch we have planned for our eighth graders afterwards goes so smoothly. Part of that team to make these, this, this day so successful again, I'd also like to thank Mr. Ben Benjamin and Mr. Chris Heater. And, and you also heard from a lot of the students, but I'd like to, to just say her name, um, Mrs. Deb Schwab. Yeah. And last but not least, I want to make sure I thank our eighth grade students, all of you. Nation. You talked about the challenge of doing what is a really high-level community service service learning project. I hope all of you feel like you've accomplished something. I hope all of you realize just how special what you've done individually and what you've done as a grade really is. This is unique stuff and we're quite proud of you all. Thank you. Now for dismissal today, I'm going to ask our eighth graders Stay here just for a moment so that you can visit with your family for a moment or two. 
after our sixth and seventh graders have exited the auditorium. I'll let the eighth grade know when it's time for them to go get their coats so they can meet me and their teachers in the courtyard to walk over to the restroom. Sixth grade, you'll be dismissed up the back staircase. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.